Well, hello again, Plant Tribe. Thank you so much for coming back. If you have been around a while, if you're new here, welcome. It is so nice to have you. So if you have not seen Plant Tour Part 1 and Plant Tour Part 2, that was a mouthful. <laughs> I will link them here consecutively and down below. Go check those out. It doesn't really matter what order you watch these in. I'm just like, you know, a one, two, three, four kind of gal myself, but you know, everybody has their thing. And so watch this one and then go watch one and then watch four, which I haven't filmed yet. And then three, just to be different. <laughs> okay guys, thank you so much for coming back. So let's go ahead and get into plant tour part three. That's six, part three. This is what we're going to be taking a look at today. This whole area here. I'm hoping the lighting's going to be okay. We will do the best we can. <laughs> All right then. Okay, and here we go. <laughs> so we'll start in this corner. This is my ginormous Diffenbachia. He is in this big pot right behind here and he is huge he's got a new leaf coming in there you probably couldn't hear me just then <laughs> uh, this is just my little heart leaf philodendron I know it's probably a little dark it is nighttime and I'm hoping that a lot of these will show up um, if I film it in the day there's too much backlight so you know it's just it's a lose-lose so we'll see how it goes <laughs> Um, I'm going to do along the top of the shelf here first, and we'll just go shelf by shelf. So up top here we have my, he's looking a little droopy, he could probably use a drink of water. But this is my green peace lily, who's actually doing really well. Not that you can see it very well. Oh, I apologize, that kind of sucks. Okay, and there we have an aloe and a little euphorbia i can't recall the name of it but there it is and then this is a little oh what's it called senecio macroglossus i think so it's got these really cool looks like an ivy but the leaves are oh boy that's awful <laughs> the leaves are really waxy oh goodness Okay, let's hope that doesn't last okay <clears throat> anywho let's get in here and take a look so back here we have a euphorbia that I just got really cool I love the variegation right up the center there it's really neat looking beside that we have this gorgeous whale fin sansevieria and then over here we have a grafted uh, crested euphorbia. Love the way it splits there into the two colors. Okay, moving forward, we have a couple different uh, Horthias in this little pot here. We have a little jade. I love the little red on the outside of the leaves. I think that's so pretty. And then we have this little, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a cactus or a euphoria. I'm not really sure. I know there's like a way to tell the difference and uh, I don't remember it. I think this is a euphorbia. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. It's, it's quite likely that I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I thought he was really cute so I picked him up. Um, those right there are two little pieces of agave americana. They're two little babies. They haven't really done anything lately, so I'm not sure what's up with them, but, you know, they're hanging out in the pot anyway. <laughs> uh, this little guy right here is a fire stick. And, um, these are really cool when they, um, are exposed to a lot of light. These top little bits turn like this really cool bright red color. And they just look like fire. 
Next to that, I'm hoping all of this looks okay and you can kind of get an idea, an idea of what it all looks like. I know the lighting is weird. But this is a little, uh, there's a few names for this, like glass top Horthia. But if you get really close, you can see that the tops of these are actually like a clear and that's how they pull in the sun to photosynthesize. It's a really, really neat little plant. Uh, in here, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it or not. Oh my goodness. Focus. The backs of this guy, and I think, I can't, oh man, I'm going to have to look up what this thing is called. If it would focus. Focus. There we go. The backs of them are like a purple. It's really, really pretty. Although it's doing this wonky grow out of my pot thing, which is kind of weird. And then just next to that, we have a little Echeveria. I believe it is the Pearl von Nuremberg, if I'm not mistaken. I'm kind of out of sync with my <laughs> succulents. So that is the first shelf. Focus. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Okay, and on to our second shelf here. We have this cute little... Oh man, can you see it all? It's a little gimbal. I make the shots, okay? Uh, it is a little... Um, variegated... Uh... <laughs> variegated uh, oh my god what's it called I can't even remember what it's called uh, it'll come to me it'll come to me maybe I don't even know okay like <laughs> next to that is also a new plant so cute these flowers are so pretty they open during the day and close up at night it is an Easter cactus and I love this one because the, the flowers are very different from like your Christmas and Thanksgiving cactus and the leaves have like this red margin around the outside and it's just so, so pretty. Uh, beside that, I think this is a, just a golden barrel cactus if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong on these cacti guys, I'm not really super great with them, I just really like them. <laughs> uh, there is another one, it's a prickly pear the um hell plant <laughs> i have gotten so many of these tiny tiny little spurs in my hand that you can't even see from this thing it is crazy so that thing i definitely handle with really thick gloves in front of that we have this old lady cactus or old man i don't know if it's a lady or a man i don't remember <laughs> it's really cool anyways uh this next one I absolutely love if I can get it to show up really well here. Hold on. Um, it's got these really cool variegations. I believe this is Cactus or Euphorbia. I don't even know. You guys tell me. How about that? Um, but it's got these little cool variegations and they're like little uh, arrows that kind of all point in and down and the bigger they get, the, the further up that white comes. It's really, really cool. Moving along. Again, another one that I'm not really sure the name of, but I just like how crinkly it looks. It's really, really neat. Uh, so just so you guys know, the top shelf, uh, the top three shelves are mostly cacti and succulents. The second shelf of this tour will be mostly Hoya. And then the bottom shelf of this is just like a mismatch of stuff. Okay. I <laughs> just thought I'd get that out of the way. Okay, uh, behind here we have a little trifecta. We just have a string of dolphins, uh, another echeveria, and a little variegated elephant bush, I believe. It was just some leftovers from a planter I did for a friend. Here we have a little grafted moon cactus. So cute. Uh, here, although it looks kind of funny... <laughs> because you can't really get an idea of how white it is. <sighs> Anyways, this is my ghost euphorbia. You know what? I'm just going to take it out of there. Let's see. Let's see if this helps. There he is. 
super cute little euphorbia or cactus or I don't even know. Ow, ow, prickly. Uh, beside that, we have this, <laughs> I like to, it, to me it looks like if you guys have seen Tremors. Have you seen Tremors? The Graboids. <laughs> That's kind of what it reminds me of, coming up out of the sand and, you know, eating people and stuff. But it's uh, got these really spiky prickles on it. It just looks like, you know, something you don't want to be near. All right, moving along, we have everyone's favorite booby cactus looking rather perky today. It is growing. It's got a couple new little boobies on the top there and she's looking good. Beside that we have another little cactus or euphorbia. I really wish that I had researched what the difference is and I know I've read it like three times and then I remember and then I don't remember. I think it's a cactus. Anyway, uh, it's kind of cool looking. I just picked it up. I saw it kind of on its own at a nursery and it was looking pretty sad. And uh, it's really blurry, huh, guys? Let's see if we can focus. That's a little better. Anywho, he was kind of neat, so I picked him up. Uh, down here we have a couple air plants. We have two little lithops here. This one, as you can see, is starting to split. For those of you who are really creeped out by that kind of thing, my bad. Um, I've had these for quite a while and they haven't really done anything until recently. And then this one right here, see if you can see that. Let's see, focus. Yeah, he's starting to split too and it's coming up through the bottom there. So that's kind of fun. Moving on beside here, we have a little crested... Um, <laughs> I'm doing this too late at night. My brain doesn't work. Um, starts with an A. Starts with an A. <sighs> Crested Aeonium. And it's a variegated one. It is pink and this really pretty green. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. How pretty is that? So cute. And then beside that we have a couple more air plants. Um, for those of you who have air plants or would like air plants, um, I have, so I read a lot of things online about how to take care of air plants and a lot of the stuff I saw was like, um, you know, just put it for 10 to 15 minutes in water and it's fine. You definitely want to leave it in for longer than that and I found that if I leave it in there for a couple of hours um, my air plants have done much much better they've actually grown which I was shocked at because they did nothing for the longest time um, so they definitely need more than you know 10 to 20 minutes of water um, and always make sure that you turn them upside down and drain them out after you take them out of your water because the water will sit down inside there and it will actually rot just like root rot would if it's there's wa too much water in there. Okay, just helpful little tip. <laughs> Moving on to the next shelf. Okay, if we look at the back here, this is a cute, fuzzy, it's a different kind of, one's like an old man cactus and one's like an old lady cactus and I don't recall to be honest which one was which, um, but it's super cute, super fuzzy. <laughs> Beside that we have this weird and wonky peperomia that reminds me of a Christmas taco, <laughs> just, just because of the colors, I don't know. I'm surprised that thing is still alive to be totally honest. Um, and beside that I've had this holy, this is probably one of the longest ones I've had since my uh, craziness all started and that is just a variegated peperomia. Okay, if we look down here, this is an adorable little variegated bear paw. Like how cute so cute cooperate please camera anyway oh it doesn't want to okay well anyway it is so cute and the leaves are actually very soft just like a bear paw they're adorable 
Beside that, we have my little watermelon Nishidia. It's growing some sexy vines up there. I like these. When the leaves come in, they're like this really reddish color. And um, I find they kind of keep that if you keep them in higher light. Um, there was one on here. It must have changed that had a little bit more red tone on it. Unless I lost the leaf when I was cleaning earlier. I don't know. Uh, beside that, we have this... I don't know, I want to call it a blue torch cactus, but I'm not really sure what it's called. Um, but it's really cool looking. It's got this blue hue, which I'm not sure is coming off on camera, but it is really neat. Beside that, we have my little rainbow hedgehog cactus. I was looking for this guy forever, and I finally found him. I think he's so cool. Uh, they have this, you know, really cool coloring that goes kind of from lighter pink to darker pink at the top. Super cute little cactus. In front of that here is my little um, Crassula Calico Kitten. Uh, it is so cute and dainty and pink. Let's see if I can get him in better light. Look at him. Isn't he pretty? Adorbs. Uh, beside that, we have another little, it kind of reminds me of like a little pin cushion. It might actually be called pin cushion cactus, maybe? I don't know. You guys tell me. It's really cute. It reminds me of like my grandmother's pin cushion. <laughs> uh, here we have my variegated dechidia, or variegated string of nickels. See if I can get it into some better light and you can see the variegation on it. Uh, it's going to be hard. So these bottom little leaves are white. And you can see a little bit of the variegation there. Um, but it is kind of hard to pick up on camera. But that is the variegated string of nickels. And then beside that is just your regular green string of nickels. With all those crazy little aerial roots. Search for something to cling on to. Um, up here you can see, oh yeah, I forgot him when I was showing off up here earlier. This is my big spider plant. Uh, so this is Clyde. We have my Bonnie spider plant that you will see in part four of my tour, um, which will probably be the one with the most um, impressive plants, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so I have my Bonnie spider plant, and then we called this one Clyde because Bonnie and Clyde, and I'm cheesy like that. <laughs> so that's Clyde. He's the one, um, if you've been with me for a while, that was in the corner of my bathroom, and Jordan used to get freaked out because he thought he felt like it was watching him shower. <laughs> okay, moving along. Okay, now I did switch a couple things around, so you have already seen this Hoya Carnosa. This was on my black shelves, uh, it would have been in part one. Um, so you have seen that guy already, but I think everything else, oh, actually there is one more <laughs> over a little further that is new. Um, but this guy right here in front of us is my Hoya Viola, and I just got this one a few weeks ago, and there is actually... If you can see it right in the middle there, oh, it's not going to be able to get a clear shot, but there is a little teeny new growth point right there. So exciting. Here we have my Hoya Embricata. Uh, this plant is really cool. Uh, if you saw my Hoya haul recently, um, I got this guy because they actually are a shingling Hoya, which I find really interesting. And the other thing that's interesting is if you can see this like reddish hue um, on the back, it doesn't have that. It is pure green. So this reddish hue, like a lot of Hoyas, comes from the light when it's exposed to um, higher light scenarios. It does get that pretty um, reddish tint. Okay. Back in the corner here, we have this ginormous string of turtles cooperate 
There we go. And uh, he's trailing around all of the sides of the pot here. Uh, eventually I'll have to put him in a hanging planter because he is already dangling down onto the, uh, the shelf. So, <clears throat> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Or when I stop procrastinating about it. <laughs> Whatever comes first. Okay, uh, this guy here is a Hoya Wedii, I think they're called. Um, this one has been a little bit of a struggle. Um, I do find that they do require a little bit more water than the other ones. And I'm assuming that's because they have a thinner leaf than most Hoyas. And they don't like a crazy, crazy amount of light. So I just moved it here today. We'll see how it does. Um, but so far, it's doing not too badly. So really cute, really cute plant. Uh, this is another one too when it gets more light the edges get a little bit darker um, but they turn more of like a deep I don't want to say, like a deep purple maybe than than a red like you would see a lot of other Hoyas okay so that is that shelf there we go <laughs> and moving on okay ignore this dangling thing I still have to get it stuck up out of the way. Um, so this guy is a little Ripsalis. He's not doing the greatest. I'm still trying to work out the care for this guy. Um, he did lose a lot of leaves, branches, sticks, twigs. He lost a lot of green. <laughs> and um, But I think, I think he's starting to snap back. There is some new growth on the top there as you can see and he's looking better. I don't want to get too excited. But he's looking better. <laughs> Beside that is one that you saw in my last plant tour. I moved him over here so I could have kind of like an all Hoya area. Um, that is my Hoya Clistophylla, I think it's called. That one also has a new little growth point coming out in the middle there that's kind of hard to see from there, but it's deep in there. Okay, and to the left of that, we have my Hoya Crimson Princess Lighting Stop It. There we go. Uh, so this guy's got a lot of new growth coming out. I love, love, love the pink. Let me turn this so you can see this new little leaf. Look at that. Like, how cute. So cute! It's like crimson. Beautiful. Below that, we have my Hoya Australis Lisa Variegata. Variegated Hoya Australis Lisa. I don't know. This one also has a new little growth point. It's the first little growth that I've got since... Uh, let's see if I can zoom in there and you can see it. There it is. Adorbs. So I'm really excited about that. That'll be the new uh, first new growth since I've got this plant. Next to that, we have my variegated Hoya Bella, who is growing so quickly if you recall i got this not long ago um and i mean it wasn't super tiny but i mean pretty much from here down is all new and i think i only got it like two weeks ago a week ago maybe like it's growing fast so such such a pretty plant i absolutely love that hoya bella to the right of that we have the highly sought after Hoya Sunrise. Look at the leaves on this plant. I'm hoping, let me try to oh, readjust here. See if I can zoom in. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get a good shot here for you. Focus. Really? We're going to play that game. Okay, guess we're fighting today. Oh, a little better. Anyways, when this is exposed to higher sun, um, it does get this beautiful red hue to the leaves, and that kind of gives the Hoya Sunrise its name uh, because of that beautiful red color. Okay, and in the front here, we have my Hoya Matilde who isn't shy, she's, 
reaching out to say hello. Uh, this thing is a really, really fast grower as well. I love these tiny little spotted leaves. Such cool markings. So if you want a Hoya that grows quickly, um, that is definitely, definitely a good candidate. And the last one on this shelf is right here, and this is my Hoya Lacanosa Eskimo Silver. There we go. Really cute little plant. See if I can get a better shot of the leaves. Really, really pretty. This one will be really nice when it starts to go. Right now it's just kind of a little cutting, so it's a little underwhelming, but it won't be that way forever. Okay, so... There is the fifth shelf. And moving on. Okay, let's get right in here in the back. This is my Ficus Elastica the Strawberries and Cream. Oh my goodness. Look, camera, please cooperate. Um, really, really pretty plant. These leaves have this gorgeous pink hue. If you can see there, that new leaf comes in just bright pink. So pretty. That is the only plant that I've got that has successfully made it from the U.S. to Canada and has not got, <laughs> um, you know, confiscated or, you know, lost or whatever. <laughs> it's the only one. <coughs> oh, that's not true, actually. The Cebu Blue that I got from a uh, subscriber actually made it here safely as well. Okay, uh, beside that we have my variegated Hoya Kerry, Kerry eye, sorry. And um, this one's finally starting to get some new growth. There's quite a few new leaves on the other side there. And uh, it's really pretty. It's okay. She's probably not my favorite Hoya, but it is really pretty so I can't really complain. So here we have the new Hoya Multiflora. Uh, this one I just got last weekend from Vandermeer Nursery. There is two spent peduncles, but I have heard that you just leave them there and it will rebloom from the same spot. Can anyone confirm? Because that would be super cool. <laughs> Anyways, the flowers, if you've never seen a whole Hoya Multiflora flower, look like little shooting stars. They are the prettiest little flower. Uh, go Google them. Honestly, they're adorable. Okay, in front of that, we have my Hindu rope or my Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Uh, so there's actually two cuttings in here. And they are finally starting to grow and trail a little bit, which is super exciting. Because that's been a long time coming. <laughs> Okay, to the left of that, we have the Hoya Obscura. Uh, so this is another plant, if given enough light, will get that gorgeous red tone. Stop it, lights. Oh, that's annoying. Anywho, um, there we go. So this one, sometimes they're a little more reddish, sometimes they're not. So I'm not really sure. There's a couple on the back there that you can see a little bit of the reddish hue. So I just moved it directly under this light. So hopefully we will start to see some more of that red tone coming through here in the next few weeks or so. To the left of that, we have this big boy. Let me readjust here. I'm going to have to take him out so you guys can see him. So this is... My Hoya Obovada. I think they call it a splash. But the leaves are so cool. They have this, it's almost like a dusty pink splash on them. But this thing is growing like a weed. And for the longest time it did nothing. So I was like, okay. So I just kind of resigned myself to the fact that this was just going to be a really slow grower. And then it just kind of took off and went insane. <laughs> so it is doing balls. And the last one on this shelf is this cute tiny little Hoya Curtisii. The tiny little leaves. 
So this was given to me and it was just this little in the pot lying atop the surface uh, cutting from Paula uh, a couple months back and it is doing quite well. It has grown quite substantially since she gave it to me and I love it. The little leaves are just absolutely adorable. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Look at those. They're so pretty. <laughs> and they almost look fuzzy but they're not really, they're kind of like a less harsh sandpapery kind of feel. Okay, so that is everything on that shelf. So let me give you a little overview of what we looked at so far. So we have all of our cacti and succulents across the top here. And across the middle we have all of our Hoya and some other random bits thrown in there. All right, let's move down. Okay, right front and center here, see if I can get a better shot of it, is my gorgeous Monstera Thai Constellation. Uh, that is its newest leaf. Can we get a focus? There we go. Um, so this plant has actually lost all three of its original leaves, um, which were all the ones that it came with, hence the original part, I guess. <laughs> um, but they didn't have any fenestrations, and I think it was just, you know, letting those one go to make room for all these new, gorgeous, fenestrated leaves. Um, so I will tell you that over the course of last spring and summer, this plant was probably one of my fastest growers. It was just constantly spitting out new leaves. I would say like one a month. But this is the only plant, I believe, in my collection that has not grown a leaf all winter. Which I find really odd because the rest of my plants just went absolutely nuts. Um, so I am really looking forward to this guy growing some new leaves for me this spring. Okay, I am just going to... Pause this for a second. I've got to move him out of the way to get to the plants behind. Okay, so the stuff down here, um, it's not very lit right now, but when the sunlight's coming through here, these plants do get quite a bit of light. Um, but you can see I have this ugh, sad excuse for a Pilea peperomoides. And then this one here is a little pup that I took off of him. These ones, I'm still working out the care on them. I'm not really sure what they want, ever. Uh, below that, I have this little Mona Lisa lipstick plant who struggled for a while, and it was another one that I just had to work it out. It was, you know, just a, a care issue on my part and just a learning curve, and now she's actually starting to grow. We've got all kinds of new vines growing up and everywhere. And she's doing much better. Behind that, it's kind of hard to see, we have my philodendron, uh, <laughs> oh, come on, brain, uh, black cardinal, black cardinal, yeah. And this one is finally starting to do things, which is super exciting. It's got a couple new leaves, these two big ones here. Um, for a long time, it didn't do anything, but that was totally my fault, and I knew why. I just was too lazy to do anything about it. But we've got that fixed, and now it is starting to grow like a normal philodendron. <laughs> okay, next shelf. Here is another kind of same scenario. This is my philodendron Prince of Orange. For a long time, this plant did absolutely nothing. Um, if you've watched any of my previous plant tours, this plant and this moonlight are the ones that I complained about the most because they just would not do anything. Um, so I moved them into higher light and lower light and it wasn't really until I, until I moved them into this front window here that they really started growing. Uh, you can see there's a new leaf coming in there. This kind of new orangey one is a little wonky, but hey, it's fully unfurled. <laughs> I can't complain. And then there is my Moonlight, which has a new gorgeous leaf that's coming through there. And I can't wait until that one opens because that will, it looks like it's going to be a normal leaf and it looks like it's going to be a decent size. So that's very, very exciting. And then we have this poor, <laughs> don't judge me. This is so sad. 
So this uh, watermelon um, peperomia it got thrips, and then uh, I don't know what happened to it after that. It just it really took a lot for me to snap this back, and I lost most of the leaves except for these two. But we do have these super cute little babies growing in down here at the bottom. <laughs> So that's exciting and to me that's a good sign so we're just gonna let him hang there where he seems to be happy and do some recuperating okay moving along here we have my oh gosh come on there it is my variegated rubber tree or my ficus taniki I think they refer to them as such a gorgeous plant these leaves are so beautiful they look very pixelated like somebody just painted them and I am just in awe of every leaf that comes out because they're all so different such a pretty plant okay and to the right of that yes I still do have <laughs> a poinsettia uh, it's doing quite well I actually um, had forgotten about it for a little while and it was a little limp. It's starting to snap back here this after, or this evening, uh, but it was a little bit limp. I gave her a good water and she's starting to snap back. So we're doing okay. I've still got um, one, two, three, four out of the five poinsettias that I got at the beginning of Christmas or beginning of December. So I think I'm doing not too shabby. <laughs> the goal is to keep them as long as I possibly can and then I'm gonna try to over summer them which sounds weird, but if you saw my poinsettia video, that will make sense to you. <laughs> and then we have this other little um, watermelon peperomia who I got not long ago. It is doing quite well. It's growing all kinds of new little leaves in there, if you can see them. And he's just rocking it. Okay, moving along. Okay, on this side we have a sad begonia who is getting happier. It's just taking some time. Um, see if I can it's a gorgeous plant the leaves are massive um, he had a little bit of an issue when I put him here but he is getting very he's growing all kinds of new shoots as you can see so he is a work in progress but he's he's doing okay he's doing better he's just a little unsightly at this point but he's aight Okay, and the last plant I'm going to show you, I do have some plants around the rest of this shelf, but I'm going to save it for my video five, which will be all the stuff that's not really on these main shelves. Um, so I will show you this. So if you watched my terrarium video, you will remember this guy. Um, so I think I can probably get in and show you a little bit better of a shot. So the... Terrarium itself hasn't gotten enough light that, that these two little earth stars or this cryptantha require. So they have kind of lost a lot of their pink, but um, I am trying to get them into a better light sort of situation so that they get that pop of color back because that's really what made this terrarium was the two really bright pink stars right in the front. Um, mostly everything else is doing really well. There's the China doll in there. There's the tricolor fern. There's that white and green fern that I don't know what it's called. <laughs> there is some asparagus fern in the back. I can't focus on it. It's back here. <laughs> and then my mosses. So the mosses that I bought that said that they would live <laughs> if you replanted them. Uh, I got them from, they were supposed to be like for um, vivariums, like frogs and things like that. And I don't, I think there might be a little chunk right in the middle in there that actually made it. Um, but the rest of it didn't hold up so well. However, when I bought these Cryptantha on the top of the soil, it had, I think it's called duckweed. No, not duckweed. Um, no, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, it's this type of moss so I kind of harvested it off the top of the the soil that these came on and it has taken off it has grown if you can see that very well I don't know I'm gonna focus 
I guess. That's about as good as we're going to get, I think. Um, but I thought that was really, really cool. So I actually have a bunch more of that that I am propagating in hopes that I can get a lot more of it. So I might actually go in and, um, and put some more in there so we have some more green along the bottom. But that is my little terrarium and it is doing fabulously. Okay guys, well that was about it for this video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead right now and insert my plant tribe commenter uh, of the day or of the video for lack of a better way to say that. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Today's plant tribe comment comes from Eggie Hasselfield. Uh, Eggie, I wish you all the luck with your begonia red kiss. They are so, so pretty, and I'm really sorry to hear about your maculata, but good luck with this one. Thank you so much for all your kind words always. Mwah! Isn't that amazing? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, I realized that in my last video, I didn't really explain this well, and if you hadn't seen the previous video, you were going, what are you talking about, Nikki? So what we've been doing is I want you guys to find me on Instagram. I will insert my Instagram handle on the bottom of the screen here. It is always also down in the description of all of my videos. Go ahead and find me on Instagram and I want you to send me your favorite plant in your collection. It can be any plant. Um, <clears throat> and then, so send me a picture of it. Just explain why it's your favorite. And I would love to feature that in my next video. Okay, guys, so that about does it for the video. Now make sure that you stay tuned for my next one. The next one is probably the biggest, uh, as in most impressive, part of the tour. Um, <clears throat> and it is the Home Depot racks at the top of my stairs. Let's see if I can give you a really quick cheat. Ooh. Oh, that's all you get. <laughs> I know, that's cheap, isn't it? I'm sorry, you're just going to have to come back and watch. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a great day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah!